This recent blog post from Evernote has a lot of excellent news, but Federico used a lot of tech jargon here. So let's try to figure it out together. About two months ago, Evernote released real-time editing, and to make that possible, part of the app's code was rewritten, which in turn created a particular situation. From that moment on, all the new notes we created they had this new format. Of course, this is a technical difference. The note itself is the same. However, old notes that we opened after this change would have to be converted. And that's why we were experiencing a delay when opening old notes. So my question is, why haven't Evernote converted all our notes from the old format to the new one when they released real-time editing. Uh, in the future, we will probably have a process where we just okay. both, convert, uh, all, of convert all the notes. The reason why we didn't do that is because um, not everybody is, is on an RTE uh, compatible oh, client right now. I see, I see. And so uh, we didn't want to convert them all and then have some people needing to reconvert them back because there's oh. also a system to convert them back to, to the old <laughs> format, of course. And There's the so many details that we never think exactly. about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So like, like it, would, it would happen the other way around. If the person is not on a new client, exactly. then it would be converted back to the, the old state. Exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> and, in, and in the beginning, the people on older versions are the majority because they are mm -hmm. those who were using those versions until sure. yesterday. And so, as we go along, we will just need this conversion process less and less, and, and so in, gradually in time, we'll stop converting them. This is just a clip from one of the two amazing conversations I had with Federico. You'll find the links in the descriptions below. And if you like this kind of content, please do both of us a favor and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot, and for some reason, half of you who frequently come back to watch my videos are not subscribed. Okay, let's get back to the blog post because there is another problem here. There is a however here. There, some of the users were still having problems even after the notes being converted. This didn't happen to my account, but I think I understand what was going on here. Evernote saves our notes all the time, creates a history of the notes, and we can go back to a certain point of the note. This is not available on the free account, but we can go back, let's say, I think it's it does it every hour, but we can go to a, a, a older state of the note. And when he says here, led to a normal generation of huge histories. This is what I think it was. Something was wrong with the histories and in turn this was making the whole experience slower. But then once we identify the cause, we quickly implemented the necessary solutions. But here's something that I found very interesting with since contributed these fixes to the open source community. And I think this is good. It's nice to see Evernote collaborating with the open source community completely rewrite the Evernote desktop and web navigation system. When I read this, I was like, why? After all, Evernote 10 code is a new code. Okay, I think I have another clip from the conversation I had with Federico that can help us understand this. What Ian said was, was correct, basically. We, we wanted to evolve the product and modernize it. Uh, to do that, we needed to rebuild some pieces but not like the whole product from scratch. And so in our case, what we did was rebuilding the backend uh, okay. flow of the of the node updates almost from, from scratch. Oh. Um, and we repackaged the, the client from end uh, pieces so that it would work um, with, with RTE or the CRDT system. Um, and yeah, this again, this does not mean that we rewrote Evernote. Uh, we touched a fraction probably of, okay. the, of the whole code base. <laughs> Uh, to implement RTE, but those edits allow us to unlock uh, many cool things, and such as like RTE itself, the the new immediate sync, and, and more. Um, so, what both what what Ian said and what I wrote are, are are true. We are we modernized the app and its flows to prepare it for the advanced, okay. advanced. So features. what what he did in a way helped. What do you what do you what do you did? 
Exactly. Yes. Okay. So it was it was yeah. just another step on that on that modernizing yeah. the app. Just to make sure there is no confusion here, this is an old conversation. It happened back in May, but what he is explaining here is, I believe, the same idea. In other words, there is this big code that is a new code. Every node is a new code, but there will always be evolution, and parts of this code will have to they will have to work on it again and create new parts of this code to to allow the product to evolve. Okay, but there's another interesting part here in the article. He says, the only hint is in the new URL structure. And he talks about this new structure where there will be a slash notebook, then a slash note. And I wanted to see this, so I went to the web client. It's been a while since I've used the web client for the last time. And wow, it's pretty fast. Now, let me show you here. This is my uh, test account. I cannot show you my real account for obvious reasons. So down, 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 down here. Okay. You see that? What's going on here? This is so fast. <laughs> Some of them are taking a little longer, but it's pretty fast. Look the size of this. By the way, uh, these are some of the books I've read, and if you want to check some of them, I have the latest, at least the latest one, in my website, uh, vladcampus.com slash library. you find the link in the description below. Some of them are still taking a little longer, but it's pretty fast. Now if I move to the ones I've opened. This is real time. Okay, yeah, I even this one. Look the size of this note. Look the size of this. Again, I'm not speeding this up, it's real time, but remember, this is a browser. You are using every note through a browser, and browsers have cache. So if you are not having the same experience there, I suggest you at least try cleaning the cache, and if that doesn't work, contact support. But definitely contact support. They can only fix things that are not working if people report problems. Monolith migration. Yeah, this last one is not going to be easy, but Google is our friend. Let's try this. Monolith. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> Let's try something different here. Software Monolith. Much better. It's an Atlassian post, and I like their posts, so let's take a look. The word monolith is often attributed to something large and glacial, which isn't far from truth on a monolith architecture for software design. <laughs> Making a small change in a single function requires compiling and testing the entire platform. This doesn't look good, right? It may start to become cumbersome to have many developers working on a single database. It's lower development speed, you can't scale individual components, and the list goes on. Well, although I may understand less than 10% of the technicalities here, <laughs> I think we have to agree that moving away from a monolith architecture, yeah, is this is how it's called? Whatever. Maybe it was a good thing. Finally, we have the work doesn't stop here. Uh, a small group of users, employees, and Evernote experts hmm. are already testing AI search, and the feedback has been enthusiastic and encouraging. Hmm. You know what that means? That Federico is coming back soon. So maybe subscribe to the channel. 
If this video was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. And if you want to help even more, please consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member. Thanks for watching. See you soon.